Peace and Shalom Israel. Before we start the lesson, hit the notification button because we upload lessons every week and I don't want you to miss a single one of them. Like, comment, subscribe, and if there's a topic you would like for us to cover, we'll see what we can do. So until next time, cue the music. All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining us on the program. This is a Fountain of Israel Bible Studies program, and as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's holy Sabbath day. Shalom, Israel. Now, today is not just any ordinary day, and it's just not any ordinary lesson. Today, we are going to remember and memorialize and observe one of the Lord's holy days days and today is the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets and now what we have to understand when we do our holidays the beauty is we do ours for a reason with a purpose and we know all our holy days I should say are for a purpose we know that it is the unfolding of the plans of the Most High God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob we know that this is how he is going to uh, save his people and everyone who joins themselves unto his people, unlike our holidays that we celebrate in our society today. You know, all the holidays that are coming up towards this time of year. What, next month, there's going to be Samhain or Halloween or All Hallows Eve. All those things are going to start to happen, right? Then you got Thanksgiving, then you have the biggest one of them all, Christmas, and then you start the whole process over again with Easter and they have nothing but pagan origins in them. However, when we observe ours, these are the ones that the Lord commands. Do, do you not find it interesting that people can celebrate the common everyday pagan holidays with such zeal and such fervor and find every excuse in the book to observe said holidays? And then, all of a sudden, when you come along and say, well, what about the feast days? Well, oh, that, well that, 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 that's Old Testament, or that, oh, that's for the Jews, or that's for all the excuses in the world not to celebrate the ones that the Lord commanded us to celebrate, but they celebrate the ones he said nothing about except to stay away from them. I find that to be quite interesting to say the least. And so as we enter in this season where everyone else is practicing paganism and idolatry no 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 not us not us no not those of us who call ourselves his that's not what we're gonna do we're gonna understand what it is that he wants us to memorialize and we're gonna pay attention and we're gonna learn something about the plan of God now this is the memorial of the Feast of Trumpets, and what we have to understand is that the trumpets, there's you know a number of things that trumpets can symbolize, but two of which is to warn you, and the other is to announce that royalty is coming. That is to say, the king is coming. The memorial of the blowing of the trumpets is signifying to us and symbolizing the announcement of the coming king back to this earth. So with that, if you guys don't mind, join me in Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Because we're going to do this and we're going to get it with an understanding. Because a lot of when we celebrated the other man-made holidays, half the time we didn't even know why we were doing it. We just did it. It was just tradition. But no, 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 no. We are going to know why we're memorializing our holy days. So Colossians chapter 2, I want to pick it up at verse 11, which reads... In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith and operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead, 
Verse 13. And ye being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened or made alive together with him, having forgiven ye all trespasses. And 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Now let me go ahead and make a quick aside. See, many Sunday Christians will turn around and say, oh, see, look, he, he blotted out the handwriting of ordinance against you. No, no, the ordinance that was against you was the law of sin and death. The fact that you had to die for your sins, that's what he blotted out. He blotted out those ordinances. Okay? For the wages of sin is what? Death. So that's what he blotted out just, just so we can all understand. Then nailing that to the cross. He didn't nail the commandments to the cross. Let me drop down to verse 16. Now we're talking to our friends or talking to those who want to convince you of going otherwise or contrary. Verse 16 said, let no man therefore judge you in meat. Okay? Like we have a dietary law. Or in drink. Or in respect of a what? Holy day, because that's what we have, that's what these feast days are, or of a new moon, that's how we observe our months, every new moon, or of Sabbath days, 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ, and people think that that little contraction there takes away everything that preceded it, no, nothing could be further from the truth, he's not saying, oh, don't worry about those things, no, 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 observe those things, they foreshadow the things that are to come. That's what he's talking about there. So with that being said, we know that we're supposed to continue in this until the king comes. So go with me where we find our holy day in Leviticus 23. Join me in Leviticus chapter 23. And when you uh, get to Leviticus chapter 23, I, I'm going to pick it up from the beginning. So Leviticus 23, and let's pick it up from the beginning. Which reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be a holy convocation, even these are my feasts. Notice that they are the Lord's feasts. When they say, oh, that's just for the Jews. The, the Lord said, these are his feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Hello? All your dwellings. Verse 4, these are the feasts of the Lord. Even holy convocations mean we should be gathering together, assembling together, which ye shall proclaim in their season when it is time. In their season, at the appointed season, these holy days, these feast days are mohadims, okay? Moeds, mohadims, okay? Meaning appointed, appointed feasts. Drop down to verse 23, if you will. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work, servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the symbolism and we'll let the Bible explain what all these trumpets mean. Now, ultimately, it means the king is coming. It means he's about to show up. Okay, and this is part of his unfolding of his plan. Okay? First, he came to clean up man. He had Passover. He had to die for our sins, make us white, have us took on all that scarlet red of sin onto himself and put us in white robes of righteousness to clean us up. And then you had your feast of unleavened bread that we are supposed to practice getting the leaven out, getting the sin out of our life. And then we have Pentecost where the Holy Ghost comes on us that will empower us when he told the disciples, hey, I'm going to leave, but when I leave, I'm going to send you a comforter so we can have the strength to continue on walking in his way. And that's how, why you have Pentecost. And now we're moving towards trumpets, giving you announcement, telling all of us, get ready, get ready. The king is coming. Get ready. And then we know the rest and we will get to those as they approach. So go with me to Psalm 81. Psalm 
chapter 81. And I just want one verse, and that verse will be verse 3. Which says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon. So that's a new, a new time. In the appointed time. See, these are the Moedims. On our solemn feast day. See, so even the Psalms wrote about this. This is what we do. This is our culture. This is our heritage. This is the plan of God. This is for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. The Lord tells us his plan. Hey, look, this is what I'm doing, people. And we get to pay attention and we need to thank y'all that we are part of that plan. We need to thank him for that. Exodus 19. Let's go to Exodus 19. Let's take a look here. And when you turn to Exodus 19, I want to pick it up at verse 10. Let's take a look. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them the day and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves. That ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be the beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet sounded long, listen. When the trumpet sounded long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. So we want to be clean, be pure. We wash our clothes, get ourselves ready. The Lord is coming, okay? He is showing up. And don't sleep with your wives. Don't defile yourself. Verse 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. So that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the neither part of the mount. And the Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai at the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. So he said, Moses, stop them, because they're going to come and try to take a look, and they're going to die. Okay, so he said, stop them. 22, and let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves. Let the Lord break forth upon them. They're going to get killed if they do. Okay? Now, after the Lord delivered all these commandments, after he delivered this, go to Exodus 20 and 18. Okay, let's take a look. 20 and 18, Exodus 20 and 18, which says, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the what? trumpet and the mountain smoking and when the people saw it they removed and stood afar off that means they ran and stood afar off hand me that book yes please okay and stood afar off all right so now let's go to the new testament let's go to john or hilkanon chapter 14 thank you Let's go to John or Yochanan chapter 14. We want to take a look because Jesus, he's, because Jesus or Yeshua in the Hebrew talks about going to a place, going somewhere else. Let's go to John real quick. Okay. Let's go to John. And John chapter 14. 
chapter 14. Let's take a look at that. So I'm just going to read the first three verses there. Okay, chapter 14. He said, let, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in Elohim. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many staying places or mansions. And if not, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I shall come again and receive you to myself that where I am, you might be too, or you might be also. Okay, so we need to understand that, that, that he's going to prepare a place. Now, I said all that to say that he's, he did leave. He did ascend, okay, in Acts chapter 1. He ascended to heaven, but he does plan on coming back, and we're going to deal with that as well. All right, he did ascend. So let's go ahead and go to Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts or the actions of the apostles. Acts, and we're going to... Verse 1, uh, well actually no, verse 6 in the book of Acts. Verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him saying, Master, would you at this time restore the reign to Israel, okay, or the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. So he said in verse 7, he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father had put in his own authority. Okay, we drop down to verse 9. And having said this, while they were looking on, he was taken up, and a cloud hid him from their sight. And as they were gazing into the heaven as he went up, see two men stood them, stood by them dressed in white, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into the heaven? This same Jesus or Yeshua, who was taken up from you into the heaven, shall come in the in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Okay? And so in verse 12, he said, Then they went back to Jerusalem, or Jerusalem, from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. Okay? So now we know he was in Jerusalem. They were in Jerusalem. They were on the side of the mountain. He left. He was taken up. And, he, and they said he's coming back. The same way you saw him leave, he is going to come back. Now the question is, where is he going? When he comes back, where is he going? That's a fair question, right? So, with that, let's go to Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 14. Chapter 14, I'm just going to read the first four verses. Okay. 14 and verse 1, which says, See, a day shall come for Yahweh, and your spoil shall be divided in your midst. And I shall gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. And the city shall be taken, and the houses plundered, and the women ravished. Half of the city shall go into exile, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And Yahweh shall go forth, and he shall fight against those nations as he, as he fights in the day of battle. And let's see what's going to happen. Where is he going to be? Verse 4. And in that day his feet shall stand upon the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from the east to the west, a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. Now, do we have an idea of where he's going to be? So, now we have an idea of where we know exactly where he's going to be according to Scripture. Okay? We don't have to make this thing up. We can just go according to Scripture. So, let's go back to the New Testament. Go to Matthew or Matthew Yahoo. Go to Matthew 24. Okay, so he's talking about these, this, this, this tribulation and talk about all the things that's going to begin to happen, which started way back in 70 AD. So let's, let's look at some of this. And I'm just going to jump around just a little bit. Matthew 24, verse 3 reads this way. 
And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, so we know where he was and we know where he's going to. We know where he was, we know where he left from, and we know where he's heading to. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now I'm going to drop down just for a second to, to verse 33. 32, actually. 32. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So he's saying it's getting close. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Okay? So he's just telling them the signs to look for when the end is near, when the end is coming. Okay, most of the disciples, they died before 70 AD, with the exception of John, who died around uh, between 91 and 93 AD. All right, so now I'm going to drop down to verse 11. Okay, verse 11. Because it started then and it's happening right now. Verse 11, which reads, And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Of course, the love of many is going to wax cold in the last days, okay? You, the children won't have respect for their parents. People will just go on uh, just, just, just killing sprees. Uh, we just heard of so many different incidents this year. I mean, we, we had a, a mass shooting in one weekend. I had two in one weekend in this country and it's happening all the time. That's just the ones we catch wind of and we go and look up some more. I'm sure we will be able to find a lot more. We saw, we know the Dylan Roof thing. We know the uh, uh, the Trayvon Martin thing. We know all these things where the love of many is waxing cold and you get more and more persecution over and over. And it's increasing. And then when they begin to deliver you up and they begin to say disparaging things about you, when you really start to get persecution, oh, you're going to know when it comes at your door. When it comes knocking at your door, you're going to know that the end is near. Right now, so-so. But there will be a time where it is going to be just about unbearable if you have not the plan of God and the Holy Spirit to guide you. Verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Nor ever shall be. So let's Let's take a look at this a little bit more. Daniel chapter 11. Go with me to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Okay, Daniel chapter 11, and I'm going to pick it up at verse 31. Daniel 11, verse 31, which reads, An arm shall stand on their part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make his desolate. So you can imagine, you know, when Rome sacked Jerusalem, they sacked Jerusalem over in 70 AD. They did all these things when they sacked uh, the temple. Okay, so that's why I say it began in 70 AD. The end began. Okay, and verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall break, shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper to the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be. Okay, so that started. But it's not done. We know the uh, Roman Empire is re totally resurrected. Okay, we understand that, and the battlefield is in the mind right now. Okay, so we know that exists. So you're still in Daniel, but go to chapter 12, if you will. Okay, Daniel 12. I'm picking up at verse one. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. 
and there should be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. See, so we know this hadn't happened yet. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Now, I want you guys to understand the reason why I said it started then is because this also is part of the prophecy and all this hasn't happened yet. We have not been delivered actually after 7 AD. We were scattered for the final time into all nations, okay? Because we know the Bible talk about regathering his people, okay? So let's just not uh, forget that. Verse two, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt, okay? So we know many of our brethren, many of our ancestors have died, okay? And many have died for the faith. Many have died for the book, the very book that we have in our hand, the very book that we have our, our, our devices that have downloaded our devices. This very same book, people counted their lives nothing compared to trying to keep this word. And for centuries, it's been hidden from us. And finally, when we get to a country, any country, especially America, but not the only country, we're finally able to, what, read again, and we're able to get this book, and many won't even open it up to see what's going on. But for those of us who have actually had the audacity to open it up and look at it and see what it says and embrace our heritage, our eyes are open and we are just awestruck and amazed at what we find. Completely amazed at what we find. It's bitter and it's sweet all at the same time. So let's look at it, drop down to verse six and it said, and one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Verse seven, and I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time times and a half so we're talking three and a half years and when and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people all these things shall be finished okay so it's completely finished so we want to see this all the way through completion completion we are still in the process okay and he will come. So a lot of people, they believe, well, no, I don't know. I think it's symbolic. No, 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 no. He told the disciples the same way you saw him leave is the same way he's coming back. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two, and I'm going to pick it up at verse one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. It hadn't happened yet. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now, I want you to understand part of this falling away. I want you, to, I want you guys to get it, that there is a great awakening happening right now. We understand and we see all the time that many, many of our brothers and sisters are waking up to who they are and their identity, and they're trying to get in line. And that's good news for us all because the kingdom is going to be a family of brethren understanding. Brethren all serving the most high in one accord, one voice. Problem is, before that actually happens, there is going to be a great falling away. There are many of us who fell away from Christianity and came into this truth. But then there's going to be those who are going to fall away from this truth. Be taken away by faith fables and endless genealogies and they have this new knowledge and don't understand that they're actually getting the new knowledge from the enemy because they don't they won't hold fast to that which is good they want to heap up new knowledge to have people all awestruck and look how much i know look how smart look how brilliant i am professing themselves to be wise they became fools and so you're going to have a great falling away even from the truth because when people have to understand 
the application thereof, the mean you have to be doers of the word rather than just hearers only, deceiving your own selves, that's when people are going to say, no, I can't do this. I'm not giving that up. That, 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 that's too much. I'm not going to do that. So again, you will have another falling away. Oh, and it's going to happen. So, verse 4, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Okay, so now we're talking about an antichrist coming up. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Okay, many people tried to do, do, do that in the past. Many conquerors and rulers of the past tried to do that. Make themselves out to be like God. Pharaohs have done it, and Egyptian kings, obviously, you know, have done it. And you have the Greek conquerors who have got Babylon, you know. Nebuchadnezzar wanted to make himself out to be like a god. The Romans have... So there's nothing new under the sun. It's going to continue to happen until the king returns. We need to see the fullness of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And then the end will come. Numbers 31. Go to Numbers 31. Wahikra. Nope. Numbers 31. Bimikba in the Hebrew. Numbers 31. I'm going to pick it up at verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterwards shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto war, and let them go against the Midianites and avenge the Lord of Midian. Wait, wait a minute. The Lord, he allowed, he, he allowed us to arm ourselves and go to... Okay, all right, all right. Because I know we've been told something different, but okay. And let them go against the Midianites and avenge the Lord of Midian. Of every tribe a thousand, throughout all the tribes of Israel, shall ye send to war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moses sent them to the war. A thousand of every tribe, them and Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to the war. With the holy instruments and what? The trumpets to blow in their hand. And the trumpet, this is an announcement, this is a warning. The trumpets to blow in their hand. And they warred against the Midianites, and the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males. Okay? They made a point to slay all the males. And we can imagine what happened to the females, but that's okay. That's another lesson for another time. Let's go to Joshua, if you will. Okay? Let's go to Joshua. Joshua, like our Messiah, Yahoshua. Go to Yahoshua chapter 6. Okay. Now, Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram horns passed on before the Lord and blew the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. We're going to drop down to verse 12. 
And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Verse 13. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord went on continually and did what? And blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them, but the re-reward came after the ark of the Lord. The priests going on and blowing with the trumpets, because it is symbolic. Okay? 15. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day, really early in the morning, and encompassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they encompassed the city seven times. 16. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. This is victory. Okay? So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And this is when the Lord won the victory of Jericho, and the walls of Jericho came crashing down at the trumpet blast. At the trumpet blast. Victory. Victory was claimed at that point, just from the sound. And when the Lord returns, the same thing. It says that he's coming at the last trump, and we'll get into that. It says that. So go to me to Nehemiah, if you will. Go with me to Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. And I'm going to begin at verse 15, which reads, And it came to pass, when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we return all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in their work, and the other half of them held both the spear, the shields, and the bows, and the harbingers, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which built it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, Every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. In verse 18, for the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so built it. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I drop down to verse 20. In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us. Our God shall fight for us. It's an announcement. It's a warning. It's pay attention. Pay attention. This is what we're talking about here. It's for all of us to pay attention. All right. Let's take a quick bit of a reprieve and go over to Psalm 97 or Tehillim in the Hebrew. 97. Psalm 97. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1, which reads, The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Verse 3, A fire go forth before him and burn up his enemies round about. Hope you guys caught that. His lightnings enlightened the world the earth saw and trembled. The hills melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, and that's what's going to happen in the end, that boast themselves of idols, worship him, all ye gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced before of the, thy judgments, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted above, far above all gods. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. 
He preserved the souls of his saints. He delivered them out of the hand of the wicked. And that exactly, that th this is what we claim to be. He's going to deliver us out of the hands of the wicked. When he comes, he's going to separate the wheat from the tares. He knows those who are his. And those are the ones who are listening to him now. My sheep know my voice. Those who choose to listen to him now. Those who choose to humble themselves now. It's too late once he shows up. There's no conversion once he shows up. It's too late. That's why he doesn't want you to be a lukewarm Christian. That's why he doesn't want you to be lukewarm at all. He wants you to make up your mind. you either hot or cold. Make up your mind. Who do you choose? Choose you this day whom you will serve. That's what you and I have to do. Because you may not get the opportunity later. So you choose today whose side you want to be on. Those are our options. But we're going to continue. In verse 10 he said, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserved the souls of his saints. He delivered them out of the hand of the wicked. So now let's go to Isaiah. 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 Chapter 27. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 12. Isaiah 27 and 12. Rich reads. And it shall come to pass in that day. That the Lord shall be off from the channel of the river. Unto the stream of Egypt. And ye shall be gathered one by one. O ye children of Israel. So now we know exactly who he's talking to. And it shall come to pass in that day. That the great trumpet shall be blown. And they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcast of the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount of Jerusalem. Amen and amen. That's exactly what's going to happen, brothers and sisters. Okay? So it says it's going to come to pass in that day. This is a prophecy that the great trumpet shall be blown and they that were which ready to perish. Now we know when we're in that great day of tribulation and all hell is breaking loose at some of us who are about to perish. And then he shows up in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. But we'll get to that. Go to Revelation chapter 8. Or Hazan chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. I'm going to pick it up at verse 1 if you will. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he, would, that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. So these incense, again, we have a lot of symbolism. Incense represents, and that smoke, it represents the prayers of the saints. Verse 6. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burnt up. Okay, so this starts to happen when this first trumpet sound. But we're still in Revelation or Hazan. Go to chapter 9. Go to chapter 9. Okay, a couple things are going to happen. Chapter 9, verse 1, it says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the keys to the bottomless pit. So, uh-oh, okay, something's happened. Satan's about to take the stage here. Something is about to happen. These are these last days, okay? And the trumpets announce all these things that are about to happen. And go to verse 11. 9 and 11. Revelation 9 and 11. 11 says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. Okay, so now Satan takes the stage. 
He's here. He's showing up now. That's when he's in full force. We know his influence is here right now. He's the prince of the power of the air. We know his influence is here right now. But now he's about to really take the stage. Okay. So Revelation chapter 10. Okay. Revelation chapter 10. And I just want one verse. So I'm going to read verse 7, which reads, But in the days of the voice of the what? Seventh angel. Now we're dealing with the seventh angel. When he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he had declared to his servants, the prophets. Now listen, the mystery of God is finished. Something's going to happen. Now we said this is the seventh angel who had the seventh trump. So when he began to sound, okay, now it's the mystery of God. So what's going to happen? What's the mystery of God and what's going to happen at the seventh trump? So let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, so we're going to do this with some understanding. Okay, so what's going to happen? So at the set, there's only seven trumpets, right? So now, since there's only seven trumpets, then he said when he begins to sound, something's going to happen. The mystery of God is going to be revealed. So we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And let's look at, or let's start at verse 50. So we can look at this mystery of God. He said, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. So this flesh, this, the one that we're in right now that can die, won't inherit the kingdom of God. But in 51, behold, I show you a mystery. Hold on. So the mystery of God is going to be revealed and something's going to happen. So he wants to show us a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. When? At the last trump. We read Revelation, the seven trumps. Something's going to happen. The mystery of God is going to be revealed. So he said, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Because this flesh and blood body can't inherit the kingdom. I mean, can't get it and have it for keeps. Can't have it the, the kingdom. And something's going to happen. And now we know what's going to happen and we know when it's going to happen. A change in the body at the last trump. It's the mystery of God. First Thessalonians chapter 4. He talks about the same thing. First Thessalonians chapter 4. In verse 13, it reads this way. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye saw or not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and what? With the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So we know what trump that is. It's the last one. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord. So I'm trying to give you guys an idea and understanding what this mystery is and what these trumpets symbolize. It all means something. So I want to give you this and, 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 and give you uh, this with knowledge and understanding so you can receive it. Now you know why you are memorializing this. For those who say, oh, well, you know, we can't really do it because, you know, we're not in Jerusalem. No, 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 no. It's a memorial. It's a memorial. We are memorial. We are rehearsing the matter. So we're ready when it happens. We're ready when we're either dead or we're ready when it happens. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And when you get to Matthew 24, I'm going to pick it up at verse 29, which reads immediately after the tribulation of those days. So forget this whole rapture stuff, okay? Get that out of your head. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. 
And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. When, verse 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So we know it hadn't happened yet because what? We as Israel, we're still just waking up. We haven't, get, we haven't got gathered yet. We haven't marched over to Jerusalem. We haven't marched over to the, to, to the mountain of the Lord to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. And all nations flow unto it. None of that has happened yet. So we know this is still future prophecy. He's not sitting on his throne down here ruling from Jerusalem. Has the meek inherited that earth, earth yet? No. Because when he shows up, there will be no worship of any other God. So many people think, oh, well, yeah, that's just, you know, it's just, you know, symbolic. No. No. He literally scattered us because we're literally scattered into all parts of the earth, right? So then we'll be literally gathered. Goes both ways. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11, brothers and sisters. Verse 15. Revelation 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. Has that happened yet? And of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come. Because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. Amen. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. In the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints. Amen. And them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldst destroy them which destroy the earth. Are we hearing this? What's going to, okay? Are we hearing, hearing this? None of this has happened just yet. But it is coming when the sound of the trumpet blows. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. You guys want to learn about these trumpets, then that's what we're doing right now. So let's get it. Revelation 19, verse 11, which reads, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. We know who this is. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Righteousness, purity, righteousness. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treaded the winepress. This is war. Treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, because there will be other kings, and Lord of Lords, because there will be other lords under him, rule, protocol. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. These are the people who align themselves with the enemy, who positions themselves against God, of course. In 19, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone brothers and sisters this is this this is the type of thing 
that we have to pay attention to because those who marry themselves to the system, those of us who wants to get out of the system, who wants to come out of her, my people, many people who want to actually say, you know what, I'm trying to unplug from the matrix as fast as possible because I see the evil coming and I want to hide myself. Yes, we trust the Most High. Yes, of course we trust Christ. Of course we do. But even when he told Noah to build the ark, Noah had to build it, did he not? Even when he told Lot to flee from Gomorrah, he still had to physically flee, did he not? So we have to understand when he says move, it is time to move. When he says flee, even the, even the Messiah said, when you see Jerusalem compass about with armies, don't even go back home, head for the hills. You had to actually do it. And so this is what we have to do. So this is coming in the end. Revelation chapter 16, if you will. Because he's coming to wreck shop. He is going to turn over furniture, brothers and sisters. It's not going to be pretty. The question is, whose side are you going to be on? That's the question. Revelation chapter 16, I'm going to pick it up at verse 1, if you will. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. This is when things really get turned up. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and gruesome sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, who went along with the system, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as blood of a dead man, and every soul died in the sea. So these are his judgments. These are his bold or vile judgments that he's putting Okay, this is the end. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angels of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and was, and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. He judged fairly. And look at what the Most High goes after. He goes after natural, he used natural phenomena in supernatural ways. He's going after your river and your water supply. He's going to go after your food supply. He's going to go after it. The wicked will pay. He's, he doesn't have to use high technology. He doesn't even have to use that. Sure, he can use a solar flare and knock that out, no problem. But he's going to use life-giving resources to take out the wicked. That's what he's going to do. That's the kind of God that we are serving right now. And I heard verse 5, and I heard an angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast ju judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy, because they deserve it, is what he's saying. Because they deserve it. Verse 7, And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. They're saying, you are fair. You are equal. The world deserves it. It is a wicked, wicked world. In verse 8, And a fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Scorch men with fire. Look, if, if you think the Arizona heat is bad, you, you, you really don't want any part of this. Okay, you really don't want any part of this. So you'd be burned by the sun, probably spontaneously combusting. Verse nine, and men were scorched with great heat, hello? And blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. So a lot of people, oh, that's kind of harsh. They didn't even repent. They didn't even repent. They blasphemed God. They, I don't want to serve a God who's going to do, oh, well, guess what? You're not. Speaking of the wicked, I don't want to serve a God who, 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 who would do that to be. Well, you wouldn't serve him anyway. If you wouldn't serve a loving and gentle God who's long suffering, who's giving you grace, giving you time to turn things around, you're not going to serve a vengeful God, a just God, the judge, the one who come to make war. Because I tell you, after a time, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. You're not going to be able to just t make up your mind. Oh, now you're scared. Oh, now I repent. No, 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 no. It's too late. 
at this time especially. They failed to give him glory in, in verse 9. Let's look at verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. They still didn't stop doing evil. So they deserve it. That's why his judgments are just. Because they, they, they didn't even repent. They didn't want to change their mind. Verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay? Letting, letting them come through. He want to make war. Okay? And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. So he's going to uh, bark out some unclean and wicked orders. Okay? Out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Okay, so this is when we're going to get to the, uh, the valley of decision. Armageddon. Okay, so they're barking out their orders and casting their evil dark miracles. Behold, I come as a thief. You're not looking when you're not ready. Blesses he that watches or prepare and keep his garments. Keep walking in righteousness. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. See, you got to be ready. It goes back to the, 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 the story of the parable of the ten virgins. Are you going to be ready? Or are you going to be prepared or unprepared? Because when all these things are happening, look at what he says. Blesses he that watches. Meaning you're prepared. Your eyes are open. You're ready. You're doing this thing. And keeping his garments. Okay, you keep walking in this thing, lest he walk it and they see him naked. Meaning, if you're getting punished and you're suffering these plagues, because he's going to protect and preserve his saints from destruction. Because we are now appointed unto wrath. So when this wrath, because this is the wrath of God, is what we're reading. So when this wrath comes, his saints are not going to be suffering the wrath. Not from him. Now, there may be some wicked people that are going to kill the saints because we already know that a lot of saints are going to be martyred for their belief and their witness in Christ. But we're talking about his bold judgment. No saint is going to die from his bold judgment. So, whoever dies from the bold judgment, you see their nakedness. You see they're not covered by Christ. So let's keep it. Keep going. Let the Bible speak at verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightning, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, because the whole world is going to change. The topography of the earth will change because things are going to be happening. Great tsunami. If you imagine all these large-scale, epic, disaster-type movies... Okay, Armageddon and, uh, and, and the deep, and all of these where you have these large, huge tsunamis and earthquakes and tornadoes, great storms. All these things are going to be happening in that day. The Lord will be able to use nature in a supernatural way for his ends. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Okay, tell me, like, you know, imagine hail. You've seen them when they're like the size of like golf balls and some baseballs and stuff. Or these, they would be even bigger. And even the small ones, they tear up cars. Now these are going to be even bigger. So, brothers and sisters, this presentation is really about the trumpets, and I want all of us to understand that these trumpets are to warn us and to announce to us 
that the God that we serve, the Messiah, the Son of the Father, the Son of God, is coming. He is returning. He wants us to keep our garments. He wants us to keep oil in our lamp. Stay in this word. So let me encourage all the leaders out there. Let me encourage all the husbands out there, all the patriarchs out there. Israel, let me encourage you to keep walking in this word. Keep going. Keep pressing forward. Feed the sheep. Prepare them. Get them ready. Water the sheep. Water your family with this word. And may the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and may the Mashiach, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, deliver us, have mercy on us, cover us, and protect us, as he said he would. Because his word said we are not appointed unto wrath. So this presentation is the Feast of Trumpets. I hope you all have been edified. So until next time, search the scriptures. Improve all things. Shalom and peace, Israel.